Hello, my name is Paul Weaver. I just want to share this uh, testimony with you and also just kind of uh, basis around life and death and um, just give God his praise. First of all, um, when I turned 50, right before I turned 50 years old, I had um, was really tired all the time. Uh, shortness of breath. Uh, me and my wife couldn't walk around the block far. Couldn't take the dog for a walk. I went to work, and no matter what I did, within the first five ten minutes, I was already exhausted for the day. I slept a lot, <clears throat> and um, I work a lot. But I didn't realize I was going through some other issues with my heart, and so I wanted to decide about six seven months down the road to go to the doctor's office. <clears throat> and um, they said that my uh, artists were clogged up and I had the widow maker. And only by the grace of God, I didn't have a, a stroke or heart attack at this time. So now recently, in February 27th of this year, I had a massive heart attack. Uh, I was um, at the city dump and... Um, cleaning my van out and had a heart attack and again by the grace of God I drove myself to the hospital and by the grace of God I survived but later that day I think that day or uh, somewhere in that time frame my niece's baby's daddy died of a heart attack he was about 30 something years old 38 I believe 36 something like that and then um my wife's friend died um, somewhere in Carolina, I think, of a massive heart attack at the time. Anyway, I just want to share this with you because, <clears throat> because outside of the, the fact that I had a heart attack and God saved me and kept me for a reason and uh, been asked to me, unknown to me right now, I still don't know what the reason is, but I'm still here. So I give God the praise and the glory for that. Um, life is too short. We don't know when, when we are going to die. And we don't know um, what to expect inside of our body because we can't see because I've been getting checkups and everything seems to look good. But you just don't know. And I always try to put this in the perspective of where is your life at today? Who are you serving today? If you're serving yourself and it's about you and nobody else. You can go to church. That means nothing Do you go to church. It means nothing that you pray over your food. It means nothing that you might say a prayer every now and then. But you're not serving Jesus. You're not serving the Lord. You are serving you. You know, and even through this, through, through this almost death experience that I had, I had some unforgiveness in my own heart. And again, by the grace of God, I was able to uh, rectify and repent and turn uh, and have get forgiveness in my life and forgiving others. Uh, some people that are special to me in my life that I had an odd against, I had to get that together. And so I did. I, by the grace of God, I had a chance to get it together. God's word is not playing. You know, and it says that uh, if you don't forgive those who trespass against you, over in the book of Matthew, how can you forgive, how can the Father forgive you of your trespasses? Don't take the word of God lightly as, as though it's nothing. Don't think that it's just a little book of stories. Don't think that God doesn't mean what he says, what he, what he means. You know, the problem is, a lot of times today, we want to do what we want to do, and then put a, put a little God in it. It can't be a little God. It can't be a lukewarm situation. It needs to be for real. So in this experience for me, I had to wake up. And this situation woke me up in a lot of ways. We hold on to things and we shouldn't hold on to them. A lot of things have happened to me in the last three and a half years that I thought would never happen. And... The devil was so busy tearing up marriages 
and destroying people's lives in, in all the other ways, through drugs and uh, 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 separation and uh, just unforgiveness, lies, manipulation, whatever he can do to get you off course, to get you to live in his life instead of the, the life that God has planned for your life. Listen to me. Listen to me well. I'm not an expert in anything containing to life or death. But I am an experienced person who have had a chance to get it right. You know, we, we, we go through life every day thinking that we're going to be okay. You do not know the hour, the second, the minute you will leave this earth. And if you don't have a chance to repent, turn from your wicked ways, you too can be caught up out here. Again, we say that we serve Jesus, but we really serve ourselves. Are you serving yourself or are you serving the Lord? Are you being honorable to Jesus or are you being honorable to yourself or to the things of this world? You want more things in this world than you do Christ. You're searching for everything in the world. Let me tell you something. <clears throat> Even through the trials and tribulations I've been through, the stuff I've been through in the last three and a, half, a little over three and a half years or whatever it is, I've been through some hardships in my heart. Anger, frustration, almost borderline hatred. I've been through all this right here. I got off course, was mad at the world, mad at God, mad at other people, just mad. And God kept me together through all this. I went to cussing, I went to drinking, I went through emotional trip, for real. But by the grace of God, he kept my mind for me not tripping over too far. But some of us still didn't get it right. And for a long time, for a while, I didn't get it right. And I slowly got myself together, slowly going to church and, and, and again trying to apply the word. The Bible says be a doer of the word and not a hearer only, deceiving your own self. You can go to church 2,400 days a week. Out of the year, whatever, whatever, I'm, I'm just putting numbers out there. You can go every day. You can go 365 days a day of a year. You can go every day to church, but if you don't apply the word to your life, it means nothing. You can go lift your little hands up and say hallelujah. It means nothing if it's not from your heart. Listen to me, people. And I've said this since my testimony, since I've had this heart attack, this major heart attack. I had a massive heart attack. And now I'm about to go have surgery. Open heart surgery. They're not done yet. Open heart surgery in probably about eight days. Listen, do not fool yourself. Don't let the devil fool you and think that your life is okay because you don't got on with your life and you don't doing this and you're doing this and you're doing that. But you're not serving Jesus from your heart. A hard thing. See, you know what I realized about a hard thing is you search that hard thing out. You look for that thing. The very thing that you want to do, you will go find it, you will search it out, and you will apply yourself to it. People that smoke weed all the time, they get that weed. I don't care how they get that weed, they'll get that weed. People who want to run the streets and not live right, they'll live with somebody or sleep with somebody. They'll do whatever they want to do, but they won't serve Jesus. But then they say they're saved. You're not saved. You're not even under the umbrella of the blood of Christ. You're not under the umbrella of Christ. You understand what I'm saying? You can't serve two masters. People say, oh, that's talking about money. It's talking about everything. It encompasses money, but it encompasses more than just that. If you serve the world, your own desires, you're not serving Jesus. You have to question yourself and ask yourself this question. And I propose this question a lot of times in some of my texts. Are you ready to meet Jesus? Are you just fooling yourself? If you're not repentant, if you're not living right, doing right, you're on your way to hell. Plain and simple. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Jesus said, I never knew you. You're workers of iniquity. That's sin. Workers of iniquity. I never knew you. 
an old Christian that you call yourself and you have an idea that you want to uh, live outside of the will of God and think that you're okay with Christ, you're not. Jesus said, if we can follow his commandments, we have to follow his commandments, not ours. And we don't want to do that a lot of times. And I, and I got off course myself for a little while. We don't want to do that. We want to live how we want to live. We want to make our own rules and have God bend and flex to our ideologies. Jesus said, I changed not. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's not changing for you. He's not changing for me. He's not changing for your emotions. He's not changing for none of them. He only stands for the truth and righteousness. If you're a man and a woman living together, sleeping around, and you're not married, that's not godly. If you're a parent who treats the wife bad, I mean, treats your kids bad, and you have no respect for them, that's not godly. And you children or, or young adults who are treating your parents like trash, and you call yourself being a, a child of God, see, that's why I don't like the word Christian. So many people use that word so lightly, like it's nothing. There's no weight in it. How you live your life is the where, is, where is the power at. That's the truth of it. And we live in the last days when the word of God is just being uh, abused by all these false doctrines and all these false prophets and teachers and pastors who are out here. Do you know the truth? Are you living the truth? So you think oh, I'm off, off my testimony. I'm not. Because my testimony is part of this it woke me up. Who are we serving? We serving self? Or are we serving God? Question yourself. Ask yourself. Because the Bible even tells us to examine ourselves to see if we're of the household of God. You know where you're at. Don't, you can't lie to God. You can lie to everybody else. But you can't lie to God. And you can't lie to yourself. That's foolishness. My new words for this year is make it make sense. And I'm going to have to put this in here because it's also part of my testimony. It's been over three years. And, and if it's not what God told you to do, why are you still doing it? Make it make sense. If God is really the author and finisher of your life and you really trust the Lord, why are any of us doing anything outside of what God told us to do? It's his will, his way. We live for him now. You hear what I'm saying? Your life is not your own any longer. Don't fool yourself to the grave. Don't listen to all these people out here telling you lies and manipulations about all this and that. Or not, not, not doing what you're supposed to do. We all get caught up in that sometimes with other people telling us, Whispering in our ear. That's the devil using that person to whisper in your ear. You don't need to do that. You don't need to be with that person. You can do this. You can do that. That's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. Straight from the pits of hell. The father gave me another chance. And I cannot take this chance lightly. That's why I had to get some things right in my own life. I'm telling you, do not take this for granted. Because the same person that died that day, my niece's baby's daddy died, not saved. Died. You don't have to be 60 years old. You don't have to be 50 years old. You can die any moment. It's not about just my heart attack, brothers and sisters. It's about life in general. When you leave this earth, where are you going? Only you can know, you know that for yourself. You know how you live in your life. People see your life. Don't get, people, don't get, don't get it wrong now. People can see more than you think they can see. Please, don't lose your life. If God told you to do something, do what God tells you to do, not what man tells you to do. 
If God tells you to live a holy life, live a holy life to the best of your ability. Don't let these foolish people out here who don't know God tell you anything and you fall in place because you want to be part of the crowd. You're set apart for a reason. See, children of God are set apart. They're sanctified. They're not as the world is. They don't do as the world does. So listen to me. If you have family members, cousins, relatives, friends who are prompting you to do all the wrong things and you're following along, something's wrong. Especially when they're not saved. I ain't talking about people who say, oh, I believe in God, but I don't go to church. I believe in God, but I can drink all I want. I believe in God, but I can go to the club and party. I believe in God, so I can sleep around. But I believe in God. You can't judge me. The Bible judges you. The Bible judges all of us. So how are you going to live your life? You want to hear, well done, God, good and faithful servant? Or are you going to say, are you going to hear, I knew you not? You workers of iniquity, cast, be gone from my face. And you go to the pits of hell. Hell is real and so is heaven. The Bible says choose life. Choose life. So you have a choice, life or death. You have a choice. We all have that choice. So what are you going to choose? I got blessed to have another chance at life to do right. I'm asking you to do the same thing. Choose the, what God told you to do. Live for the king. Not for the little stupid stuff on this earth. Lay up your treasures in heaven and not on earth. Because when you die, you will never see a U-Haul. Never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. Hello, somebody. Get in your Get in your mindset to serve Jesus, not yourself. This is a wake-up call. I'm here warning you. I'm giving you the warning because I got blessed to tell the story, my testimony. And as of today, my brother had a light heart attack today. By the grace of God, he's still here. He didn't have a stroke. Not paralyzed. Got another chance to get it right. Everybody don't get that chance. Wake up. Wake up before it's too late. Wake up. There's a some sermon in my head. It's been going around for a while now in my mindset. It's called sleepwalkers. Are you that person in the church who's sleepwalking? Going to church every Sunday, but yet not trying to live right? Going to church and and raising your little hand up and singing a song with making yourself feel good, like that's supposed to tickle God's heart and ears. That don't mean nothing to God. He wants your heart. He wants your heart, and he knows your heart. Again, you can fool man most of the time, but you can never fool God. So get your life together. Do what God told you to do. Whether it be this year, last year, Two years ago, three years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years, whatever God told you to do, you need to do it. And stop worrying about what people think about you. If you worry about what people think about you, you'll never be happy. You always worry about the wrong things. What does God think about you? That's the question. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, God, what, is, what does God feel about me? The Lord said, the one who put you in heaven or who put you in hell, you have the choice to go to hell, though. You have that choice. So you want to go to hell Oof. and burn and be in torment the rest of your life and remember your former state? That's a sad state to be in. Or go to heaven and have peace and joy for the rest of your life and never remember the sorrows you had on this crazy earth that we live in. I'll say it again. You have to choose what you want to do. And if you choose to ignore God, there's consequences. What a man shall sow, he shall also reap. A lot of us read bad things because we do bad things. We're unrepentant. We do what we want to do. And we think God's pleased with us. Don't fool yourself. 
Don't have the enemy fool yourself. And please don't have your family members or your friends or people on your job, associates, fool you to believe that you're okay with God. When you know in your heart of hearts that you're not. Get it right with God before it's too late. Be blessed.